all right we are live so good evening everybody once again and um this is like the very reason why we have all began the journey together from the very beginning um today we'll be looking at creating a first freelance account for those of us who have never created one upwork is a freelancing platform if you joined us from the very beginning I think I've seen oh, in us um, a couple of class or classes rather, especially the introductory class. So we'll be, we'll be doing all that hopefully this week before we round off for the training. But today we want to look at Upwork account creation and uh, navigation. It's not just about creating the account, it's also about understanding how to find your way around the account that you have created, that is a platform called Upwork. So here I have that Upwork is a freelancing platform that enables you to exchange your skill or value, as the case may be, for a pay. Okay, there are numerous jobs in Upwork. However, one has to begin from the beginning before one can get access to these jobs. Okay, and so in this training, we shall be taking us through the whole sign up process on Upwork creating a new account of course we'll be seeing that in a live practice and practice in a few minutes from now and further we'll take a quick tour of upwork to enable us familiarize ourselves with the platform all right so um right about now like i told us at the beginning i would be closing my screen so that alayinka can share her screen because we'll be using as an example she will share a screen and then i'll direct her on what to do um until she's able to sign up her account okay and then when she's done creating the account i'll return back to my screen and guide us on how to navigate the entire upwork uh, platform so uh Olaika, are you with us yes i am all right so i'll be i'll be going off now um just watch what i do i'm hoping that you already know how to do it because i took time to teach you guys how to um share your screen so i would unshare my screen and let you take it off from there so so you can share your screen and then you can let me know if you encounter a problem Okay. So, uh, uh, are you using a phone? Yes. Uh, this okay, okay. Okay, okay. Just give me like five minutes. Let me set up my laptop. Okay, please do. Uh, it, will, please. it will be better off on a laptop. Let me set it up. All right, no problem. All right, so uh, on your new tab, type okay. Upwork, Upwork.com. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that your, your CV is on your laptop, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay, yes. great. All right, so um, find find work find work yeah okay sign up with google all right there are other alternatives there okay but this is faster okay so mm -hmm. What next? Hang on, let's see. Nigeria, send me emails. Careful. Yes, I understand. Click on that. I 
and create create your account and then yes create Just give it time to load. I have to keep clicking on. Create the account. Well, hold on. Let me see. Okay. This almost never happens. I think it's a network problem. Click on create again. Actually, network had. I mean, Upwork had a, a server issue today. So uh, this might be one of the reasons to explain this um, incident. Did you click on create? Hello? Are you with us? Can anybody else hear me? Oh, is it my network? Yes, yes, I can. yes, we can hear you. So I think it's yes, uh, I can hear you. It's from online cast end. Oh, she lost network. It's going from there. Online, can you have network issues? <laughs> Let me try it again. No, it's going here. I have full. Uh, um, Let me try it again. Hold on, hold on. Go through, go through the site. Can you hear me? Cancel this. Cancel this process. Yes, I can. Cancel it. Yeah. Go through the sign up option. Go through the sign up option. Yeah, enter your email. Don't continue with Google. Enter your email. Okay, continue with email. Okay, it's already in use. Did you see that? Yeah, I got that. So continue with Google then. That's because you already used Google the first time. Yeah, choose. Okay, great. Okay, I think. Um, get started. Scroll down, scroll down. Let me see. Scroll down. Oh. That's all. All right. So this is just an example. Okay. Now, um, that that's fine. That's fine. Just leave it at that. So when you're creating your Upwork account, no, no, no. Leave, go down, go down, so that I can explain some things to us. Scroll down a little. Yeah. Go up a little, go up a little. I want to see the, the write up and the picture. Yeah, that's fine. So, when you're creating your Upwork account, you would be given a kind of template. Oh, you lost it again. Okay. So, you'll be given a template by the side of the account you have to create. Okay. For instance, this lady's picture and the write up shows her profile on Upwork. Okay, you can see her name is uh, Sashin M. Um, I would advise that you should use your formal name as it is on your certificate. Uh, because like earlier today, I was trying to open a, a domiciliary account and um, I, was, I was told to present uh, a document that shows that I actually got a work on this platform. But unfortunately, the name I use on Upwork does not really, does not really tally with the name I used to register my account in the bank. So I had to ask my client to send me a personal offer letter bearing my exact name. Okay, so that is one of the things you want to take note of. When you're opening your Upwork account, you want to ensure that you fill in your exact name as you, uh, that is your official name, let's take it as that. And then as you go along, we'll get to, uh, we'll get to see how you could fill other details. Okay, so get started. Let's see. All right, you can get started. 
Um, it's asking, can you go up? Okay. If you have freelanced before. Okay, so this one is um, use your discretion. Use your discretion to answer the question. So I'll just say use no. It's new. Okay. So what's your biggest goal for freelancing? Okay, let me leave you alone. Can you choose? What do you think should be your biggest goal? Because this is your account, not my account. So let's assume you are opening the account for yourself. What would you want to choose? Well, I would love to choose everything. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> don't be greedy. <laughs> Go ahead and make a choice. I think you can only choose one. Uh, um, let's see. Get experience. Okay, great. So here, I like to find opportunity. How would you like to work? Come down a bit. Come down a little. Let's see. I'll find an opportunity myself. I like to package up my work for clients to buy. I like up work to act as a recruiter. Find an opportunity yourself. Find an opportunity yourself, yeah. I think you can actually tick more than one. Is that is that possible? Try it, let's see. Let, let me try. Okay, tick all yeah. then. Tick all, yeah. So go down. Next. Okay, so here is the main option that you have. Now, if you have a LinkedIn profile, which I already asked everybody to create one, this is where you have the option of using your LinkedIn profile to automatically set up your Upwork account. Okay, so that is again to your discretion. Either you import your profile from LinkedIn or you upload your CV. That was why I asked us to make sure that we set up our CV yesterday. And finally, you have the option of filling out the form manually i really um even though i did the last option i used the last option because as a then my linkedin profile was not quite optimized so if your linkedin profile is not optimized don't use that option but if you feel you have actually optimized your linkedin profile and it's good looking professionally then i will recommend that option okay but if yours is not optimized then go with the second option that is the upload your your resume that is your cv okay however if you don't have a cv ready and you don't have an optimized linkedin account or linkedin profile then the only option you have is a third option okay so i ask you alanka do you have an optimized linkedin profile no i don't do my my profile is a new one okay so you just go with the second option then to make the process easier for you that is using your CV. Before I do that, I didn't get any feedback concerning the one I sent to you yesterday. Is it okay as it is? Yes, it is fine. But I talked about, uh, I responded about the, the, the uh, what's it called? Yes, yes. Yeah, the so, reference. Yeah, the reference. So that's, I mean, yes. it doesn't really matter. Uh, when you upload your CV, it will only take the information from your CV and use it to populate your profile so it doesn't mean that if you want to apply for a job you cannot submit another cv no that's not what it means you just, you just need information from the cv so don't worry about that just tick on that you select the option upload your okay. resume all right upload it and uh, try to locate where you saved it no use the pdf format here Okay, continue. Yes, so you see, does this okay. does this appear like <laughs> something on your CV? Does that appear like something yes, on your CV? Yeah, yes. good. So that is what it is. Now, if you find that what was copied from your CV does not necessarily um, sit well with you, then you have the option of editing them. Okay, so don't just click on next, next, next. Always read, read what has been written for you and see if there is any need for you to edit it. Okay, so here it's asking, 
had a title to tell the world what you do what title would you want to start up your profile with now this profile you're creating is called your general profile and it will be the profile that every recruiter will first stumble upon when they want to check out your profile so you want to always put your best foot forward okay when i mean your best foot forward i mean your strongest skill if your strongest skill is hr make sure that you set up your first profile with hr if your strongest skill is data science you do that okay customer service can always be a specialized skill i'll show us how to create specialized profile but always make sure that your first profile holds or houses your most i mean your strongest skill all right so in this case um, is this the first um, the skill you want to use as your first profile customer experience customer experience yes okay tech support mm. okay so what yeah. you just do is delete the uh okay i think it's even fine this way because it makes it more um, specific okay but then if you don't want it this way you could just take out that part I recommend you take out a part. Take out the Trello accounting code calling part. Take it out. Or was that how you put it on your CV? No, this accounting wasn't there. Okay. Code calling was part of the. It was part of the rules, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So just delete the Trello code calling and the other thing. Those ones are not titles. They are just uh, some tools that you can use to work. Okay. You can also delete that that uh, stroke there. Delete the stroke. Okay, customer customer experience. Now, delete that and and put the stroke in between there. Because they are not they are not the same thing. No, the the straight line stroke. Uh, where are you? That should be on top of uh, your enter key. Shift and enter key. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue. Next. Okay. So I hope I hope we are all following. This these are the things that she had on her CV. So Upwork is simply copying it out from the CV. See, she selected the option of the CV. So all these things you're seeing are what she had put into her CV. So now you are being asked, can you scroll up a little so that we see what's at the top? Okay, you have been asked, here is what you have told us about your experience based on what she has on her CV. And now you are being asked, do you want to add more? Okay, so you scroll down and see, is there anything you want to add? Just look through to see if there's no. anything else you want to add um, look at the no. red board the red um, flags over there we only got part of that can you check we are not missing anything if there's nothing else you want to add then just continue now if you had used the last option which is to fill manually you can see the process is involved you have to start filling all these things by typing them out yourself. That's why I said get your CV ready so that the process will be seamless for everybody. So just continue. Uh, Bala, you can add your education. I've done that. It's, I think it's the network. What's happening? Click on it again. Uh, move forward. Move forward. Let's see what's there. No, no, not that. Yeah, move it forward. 
click on the click on the edit button the first option click on edit button that is the pencil like icon there I think we lost her again we lost her voice are you still with us Alainka? Alainka are you with us? okay all right you see the problem you see why it's important to check what you're doing now they have they have given you another country altogether <laughs> so you want to be sure that you check all these things out all right and there is an option there i am currently working in this role okay if that is if that is your current role that is if that is the most recent job that you are working then you might need to tick it take it up so that it shows that that's where you're still working presently if not just leave it the way it is all right scroll down to check other things to be sure okay. so everything is set up huh? you can save uh, I think I have to, check to make correction and all the you have to do what Hello. I have to include my location in all the jobs. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What did you say? I said I have to correct my location on all the jobs I filled. Yeah, yeah, you just have to check. Jobs yeah, yeah, you just have to check. That was the essence of the red flag that they were giving you. So if you have done this one, just save it. Save it and move to the next. See, there is no month. If it's your current job, they are fine. So save. Okay, you see everything is set, so we can continue. All right, you can scroll up, scroll up, so that we can see exactly what the question is. Scroll up. Yeah. So this is where you set up your education and your certification, as the case may be. Now, um, just continue what you're doing, Alainika, um, while I speak up okay. to others. This process is very important because if you don't fill out this process, your Upwork account will not be 100%. And there is a need for your Upwork account to be 100% so that you can be entitled to some privileges on Upwork. Okay, so you want to ensure that all these things are properly filled before your Upwork account can be approved for all those privileges. Okay, there are some privileges like um, rising talent and some badges that you will receive on Upwork that will make your profile shown to more people. Okay, but if your profile is not up to 100%, we'll get to see that very soon. Then you might have some, um, should I call it shadow banning? Your profile will not get to be shown to as many recruiters as possible. So you want to take your time to fill out all these things. Some of the things that make your profile... I don't know, it's not saying anything. Sorry? The, the, the certificate I'm feeling for this... Uh... The technique is not bringing out the option. What certificate is there? It's national diploma. Just choose national. Try national diploma. I've tried that. It didn't go. They didn't bring it. No. Okay. Um. Cancel that. Cancel everything there. Let me see. Um, Should I continue? Okay. Try try using diploma. Try using diploma. 
Skip dia mau, oke. It's not working now. It's not popping up. No, it's not. Okay, yes, erase it then. Um, I'll show you how to fill that manually. Erase that, erase that. Scroll down to other places. Let's see. Thanks, everyone. Let's scroll down, let's see. Try to save it. Let's see if okay. it will allow that. Uh, scroll down, scroll down. Can I continue? Okay, continue. Is the other one? Is the other one set? National um, now. The one of now is it okay? What is the 2022 I'm seeing there? Go back to that place. 2013 to 2022. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. Okay, so um, continue then. Next. I just went back for my project, so that's why. Okay, next. You went backward again. Continue forward to education. Oh, oh. Continue, continue. Let's see the next option. Those that that green bar below there is showing you your progress bar. Okay, so the language, English. Now, if you also have the privilege of speaking any other international language, French, Spanish, that's an added advantage for you. So you make sure you include that. But if you are speaking Yoruba, please just leave it the way it is. Leave it at English or Igbo. Just leave it as it is. is. Um, of course, the people you are going to be working with, they are not Yoruba speakers. They're, they're looking out for international languages. I think AUSA is even an international language, but I've not seen any job that requires AUSA. So just continue. Share your skill. Okay, so this is where you choose your skills based on the, the major um, title that you have given yourself. Remember the title you choose was customer experience, if I'm not mistaken, customer experience and tech support. So you want to choose skills that are within, yeah. within that title. The reason is this, the skill you choose will help Upwork to filter the kind of work or job that will be shown regularly on your timeline. So you want to be sure of the kind of skills that you're selecting. So over to you, Allah, you can select the kind of skills you want. You can see Trello is there, accounting is there, cold calling, customer service. Are you are you are you ticking them at all? Under, under customer service, don't take accounting. So take only customer service related jobs. That was why I asked us to take those courses on customer service. So you get used to the, the skills I didn't take set. accounting. I didn't. Okay. Uh, I didn't take accounting. You can look at, uh, uh, I think there should be more. Scroll down. Is that the last? 
and I'm told to search for more skills. Yeah, type tech support. Right there, just write tech support. Okay, write it in full. Technical support. Okay. Um type type customer delete one. Type customer service. You should see a drop down of menu options and customer service. Find what to choose. Let customer service already. Yeah, there are other options. I've selected right. customer service. Click on customer experience. Customer experience. Second option, yeah. Type uh selling marketing. I think that's sales. No, leave that. That's sales. Leave it out. Leave it out. Uh Okay. Leave it out. That's sales. Um, I want to crave Ugo, Ugo's indulgence because he, this, this, this seems to be one of his field. Ugo, are you with us? Ugo, are you with us? Yes, I'm with us. Okay, so um, do you have any other idea of uh, customer service related skills that could, that could come into play here? Um, let me take a closer look. I stepped out for a second. Um, what I'm looking at is accounting, accounting basics, business management. We want to increase. Oh, no. We are looking at Trello, code calling, customer service, customer relationship management, right? Yes. Um... So basically, this tends to do the trick. Okay. Yeah, technical support, customer relationship management covers basically uh, over 60%, if not more, of the customer-related services. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Leah. So let's... Um, thank you, Ugo. Let's, let's put in... Um, Alainka, you can unmute yourself. Let's put in some of the CRM tools that we learned, even though we are yet to learn some others. Uh, put in... Like Slack? Yeah, put in Slack, yeah. Yeah, put in Slack. I know we are yet to learn Zendesk, but put Zendesk. Put HubSpot. HubSpot. All these are CRM tools that you'll be using as a tech support agent, okay? So at your own free time, those ones that we could not study, take your time to watch them. You could add Asana to it, uh, Intercom, all these are tech support tools. But for the sake of time, let's just continue. At your own free time, you can always add more skills. You can see you have opportunity of adding about 15 skills, okay? So at your own free time, just add more skills as you progress. She probably wants to also add Microsoft. Uh, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Microsoft. Google Suite, Microsoft, and the rest of them. Yeah, Google Suite. Microsoft. I'm taking a class from Microsoft. I think it should be Microsoft should be office. office. Should be Office. 365. No, no, no. That's quite different. Google? That's different, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's really different. It's different. Office 365 is different. Just type Microsoft Office. Office 365. Use Microsoft Office, Alainika. Sorry if I missed. I need to include the app Excel. Yeah, you can add Excel, yeah. Excel and uh, data entry. Okay. 
just want to add communication it's for for a customer relationship management it's key that we can communicate seamlessly communication skills communication skills yeah uh, no use communication the other option two options down yeah i think that covers more that covers the bulk of it have you added data entry data entry add um appointments appointments setting appointment setting oh yeah you can use that appointment scheduling uh, i think this this will work okay let's not waste any further time let's continue at your own free time you can always revisit it and add more to it all right okay. let's continue now write your biography great now um you can see this is the this is the the part of your cv that has executive summary or career objective so what do you do? Just go up there, cancel that career objective that you have on it. Cancel that. Delete it. Yeah, so scroll down. Scroll down. You want to be sure that you want to be sure that you, you craft a well, a catchy career objective or executive, executive summary, sorry. Now, look at the right hand side of your, of your screen. You would see the way this person positioned himself. He said, I'm a developer with experience in building websites for small and medium-sized businesses. Whether you're trying to win work, list your services, or even create a whole online store, I can help. I'm experiencing this. I am I'm fully, I will fully project, I will fully project manage your brief from start to finish. So remember what I told us yesterday that it is not about you. It is about what your recruiter gets to benefit from your skill. So this is where you sell your skill rather than just selling yourself. Okay? So make sure that the way you write yours reflects what your recruiter gets to benefit from your skill. Not just telling them that you worked in this company for four years. That, how does that benefit the person who wants to recruit you? Okay? So the result is what you should be telling them and not your features, okay? Uh, but because of time, we will not be doing this. You can always return back to this to craft okay. it in a better way, all right? But because of time, just yeah. choose your area of work. Let's proceed. I'll show you how to come back to this later. Choose your area of work. Uh, tell us about the work you do. What is the main service you offer? Click on that. Uh, you, you should see customer service. Yeah, that's customer service there. Customer service. So this this is this is like the major uh, this is like the major profile that you are setting up now. This particular one here. That's your major profile. So anything you choose here will hold your major profile. So when you get to this point, this is how you should put your best foot forward. As I was telling us, what you want your first profile to be. Set it up here. Okay, check the subcategory and let's see what we have there. Use tech support. Customer experience. Yeah. All right, so let's continue. Set your rate. Your rate, how much you want to earn per hour for, for a start. Our advice is set your rate to be low because that is what attracts most people. When I started, I, I started with $5 per hour and that was what attracted my first client, okay? Now, as you progress, as your experience increases, and as your work hour on Upwork increases, because as you work, Upwork records your time, and it it populates it on your profile. Okay, so the longer you work on Upwork, the more you can now charge clients based on your experience and your work hour. Okay, but for now, the ideal is between five to seven dollars. If not, if you go beyond that, if you start going towards ten. You, you find that clients might not want to hire you, okay? However, if you are bidding for a job, which will be seen in a few minutes to come, you, know, you check out the, the hourly rating. If it is if the hourly rating is more than what you have set as your own hourly rating, then you can increase your hourly rating. I'll be showing us that in no, no, no time to come. So just 
Select between five to seven. Don't feel shy. Choose whatever pleases you. And you also need to know that for every money you earn on Upwork, Upwork is entitled to 20% of that money. 20% of that money. Okay? So in this case, you can see that is what is referred to as the Upwork service fee. So she has chosen that she wants to earn $5 per hour. But because she is using Upwork as a platform to source for job and to work, Upwork is entitled to $1 out of her hourly rate. So for every $5 that Ola Yinka earns, Upwork will be entitled to $1. So eventually she receives $4 as a pay. I hope we understand that. So let's continue. Ola Yinka, um, what are you doing? Scroll down, scroll down. Let's see what we have below. Scroll down. Okay, so that's it. Uh, all right, so let's proceed. So you can see your hourly rate can be based on upwork settings. It can be twenty percent, ten percent, five percent. But that is they use their discretion depending on how you earn. I think in this case. Anyway, let's let's proceed. Let's proceed. Something went wrong. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Scroll up. Everything is set. All went wrong. Go. Proceed again. Let's see. Something went wrong. Contact support. Oh no. What's happening? Refresh this page. Refresh the page. Wow. Interesting. Refresh again. Open a open a new tab. Open a new tab. Type up on the score. I think we have a, we have an issue again. Yeah, so it's from their server. All right, give me a moment. Let me check from my end and see if mine will open up. Okay. Mine is opening. So I think there's a problem somewhere. Okay. Try to refresh again. Still the, same the same thing. thing. Yes. Ah, go back. Go back. Continue with Google. No, continue with Google. Yeah. Yeah, select the same account. You can complete your request now. Family pre updates. Uh, please try again later. So because we don't care. Okay, I think there's a problem with your server. Check your email. Check your email to see if you got a message from them. Okay. Is anybody else? Yeah, is um, this man is not? No, there's no message. No, no message from John. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. No let's go back. Use the login feature. Let's see. 
still the same. Click, click here. Report the problem. Click here. Get support. Get support. So is it a yes or no? Use no. Or use yes rather. Use yes. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It took you back here. Hold on. Okay, go back. Go back. It took me here. Continue with Google. Continue with Google. Go back to that place. Continue with Google. We will return to get support. I'm trying to understand why it's doing this. Is anybody else trying it on their end? Anna CK is not in class today. Continue with Google. Is it not responding? It's not. Oh, go to the login option. Go to the login option. Yeah, click here. Okay, get support. I want to let me connect to. Yes. Hold on. Let me see what this says. It says some areas of our work are not running as fast as we expect. Please click here to know more details. I think it's a server problem. Okay. I think it's a server problem. Refresh this page. Let's see. There should be a place where you contact support. Refresh the page. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I think your internet is slow. They should close this cell. There should be something down here that says contact support or get support. It's not coming up. Like that. In fact, yeah, click, click here, click here. Yeah, that's it. Get support. Yes. Login, right? Yeah, I see. Still the same thing. It's it's their server. It's their server. All right. Um. Just to confirm, just to confirm what we have been doing. Hugo, do you have do you have a do you have a, an upwork profile? No, not yet. Okay. Um. Your LinkedIn is optimized, right? Yes. Okay. By Ghostbiz. Okay, so can can we can we use your LinkedIn profile as the second option? Let's see if it's the same problem. Are you on your system or on your phone? Yeah. I'm on my phone, but I'm turning on my system right away. So can can we get you to share your screen with us? Yeah, I need to log in. Um, I need to join this call on my phone, on my on my system. So I'm sharing hotspot now. You need to join the group. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm joining the. Okay, the meeting. I'm joining with my laptop. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Just give me 45 seconds. All right, no problem. All right, you can just hang on. Let's see if it's the same problem. Then we'll figure out a way around it. You can just um, stop stop presenting your screen so that Alice can take over from there. Yeah, so we'll see exactly what the problem is. I'm almost there. Just take your time. Yeah, this is basically what we're doing for today, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, You might you will need to you will need to exit exit your mobile phone. Okay, great. So just share your screen there. You know how to do that, right? You are muted, Alice. Can you share your screen? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you share your screen? Are you with us? I'm, I just had a share. Okay. So I'm looking for Upwork, right? Uh, we can't see your screen. You're not sharing your screen yet. Your screen is not showing. Really? But I'm looking at the share my... Yeah, share. That's the, the, the fourth icon. The fourth yeah. icon. Sharing now. Okay, yeah, sharing now. Um, I hope I'm doing the work, right work thing. Work as a freelancer. Yeah. Work as a freelancer. Okay. Uh, and then go ahead. No, 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 no. Tick on yes. Okay, concrete. Um, Ola Yinka, did you did you pass through this stage? I didn't see any of this. Did you see any of this? <laughs> no, I. That's strange. Because I was, you were supposed to see work as a freelancer. Um, Alan, say hang on, please. I'm sorry, hold on. I should hang on. No, no, I said hang on, hang on. I, I, I'm trying to read something there. Okay. okay.
your screen is quite tiny. Is there a way to increase the font? Yeah. Okay. Scroll up, please. Scroll up. Uh, the Apple Construction Plus is taking longer than the Chrome. It says we send you an email. Try one more time. Try create account again. Let's see if that works. It still gives the same problem. Check check your email. Any message from Upwork? No, no message yet. I think it's the server uh, because your server was down earlier today. Um, I'm I'm very sure of that. The problem is from the server. So ordinarily, at the point where at the point where online income stops, as soon as she fixes her price, yes. then we should have been able to get that account approved and created. Okay. However, I would we'll just continue with other parts of this upwork um while I try to contact their support after this training to see what the problem is. So what I'll just do now is I'll continue from my own end since I already have a profile. I'll continue from my end. Um, hopefully by tomorrow I should be giving us a feedback on what the problem is. So I'll continue from my end to show us the other things to help us navigate through the Upwork platform. So I'm sharing my screen now. So um, this is what you would see if you had a complete profile. Okay. And let me cancel this. Let me, let, me, let me cancel this. Okay. This is what it looks like. Once your profile is complete, you would see this profile completeness 100% okay now the process I was taking online car through are the things that are needed to get your profile to 100% let's quickly look at what the profile looks like now on your profile Let's give a few minutes to load up. Um. I don't know why it's taking longer. Anyway, on your profile. You have this section here this category find work under find work you have this first one here which is a find work the first on the list find work this is where you get to click on whenever you want to search for new jobs okay saved jobs now when you find yourself on a place like this you can either give up work a notification if the job goes against any upwork policy kind of you can either give them a thumbs down you know to notify upwork or you can make it a saved work probably you want to come back to it later to apply so if you save any job with this icon all of them will fall in this category all right proposal proposal is where you find all the proposals we talked about proposals yesterday so all the proposals you will send on upwork this is where you will find them all of them your profile just like i was trying to open i don't know if it's open okay fine so this is what the profile looks like okay on your profile you will find this you can see this is the profile at the back end this is what i am seeing and it is from this profile that i can make any edit of my choice okay so beginning with the top here is your picture which i suggest that you use 
a lively picture. Some persons insist on a professional picture. But sometimes people mistake professional from stern look. Professional does not mean you should look so serious with your life, okay? At least let there be a smile on your picture. Very crucial. So use a professional picture or a picture that just works fine for you, all right? And then this is where the name applies. You see, this is... This was the mistake I made, and I'm, I'm still gonna write up Upwork now to see if I can change my name again. All right, so make sure you use your full name whenever you're whenever you're signing up. The the time zone will automatically populate itself based on the information you supplied when you're signing up. Remember when Olainka was signing up, she chose Lagos and Nigeria. Okay, so automatically. The time zone will populate itself here and now to see how people get to see your profile if you want to do that click on see public view and then it will show you how your visitors will be seeing your profile the network here is okay fine so this is what visitors will be seeing you see that these things here have disappeared because now it is showing you exactly how your visitors are seeing your profile okay i told us about having a general profile this what's the first thing your visitor sees is your general profile and then there are also what are referred to as specialized profile which is what i will show that which is what i wanted to show us before we had that each but i will still show us how to go about that so let's just return okay let me quickly run through this your general profile is what you have here okay how much you want to earn per hour is what you have here then remember where we talked about executive summary this is what it looks like for executive summary or career objective on your cv so this is where that appears and of course here is where you will find your earnings that's why i said as you keep working your hours increase okay the number of jobs that you have done so far on upwork will be shown here and then how much you have earned so far on upwork will come up here but there is also a paid version and in the paid version of upwork you can choose whether or not you want this to show okay now there is a room for you to upload a video introduction of yourself basically you are supposed to it's not compulsory but these are some of the things that helps you to have a complete profile so you want to upload a simple video that introduces you where you talk about your skill okay your skill sets that you wish to offer on upwork so this video introduction to take care of that if you have not uploaded yours you see a an icon that shows you where to click on so that you can upload your video introduction and how do you do that you upload your video to your youtube channel okay or to any other platform maybe zoom i mean loom rather loom and then you simply put it you, you get the options to either upload via youtube or via a url so either ways just get yourself an introduction to to your upwork profile again it's not compulsory but it's advisable that you have one this right here it's based on what you have chosen how many hours can you work per week more than 30 hours per week for me okay languages remember i said the languages you chose if i had chosen french then it would have reflected here verification this verification would only appear when you receive your first job offer on upwork okay so everybody creating an upwork profile would have their account as unverified but as soon as you get your first client you will receive an email asking you to verify your profile and to verify your profile you will need an id card and a live um, capture a live capture of your face okay so when we get to that point we would explain it better when you begin to receive your job offers you will get to see that education this is based on what you have filled when you are filling your sign up information okay so everything will be showing up here 
uh, I, I have a I have a, uh, an agency on Upwork, so that is what this is. But on your own end, you might not get to see this, except you want to create an agency on Upwork as well. So work history. This shows anybody who visits your profile the work that you have done so far on Upwork. And for every work you do on Upwork, the major and the most important thing, apart from the money you'll be earning, is your rating. Ensure that you deliver excellently on the job that you do so that your client can always give you a positive rating. Everybody on Upwork, every freelancer on Upwork looks towards having a five-star rating, okay? Because when, when an employer stumbles on your profile, and sees anything less than a five star rating maybe a one star rating for instance it discourages them from wanting to work with you but a five star rating like this encourages them to give you a trial okay so we want to take note of that and whenever you work for someone as soon as the work is coming to a close always remind the person that they should please give you a rating and leave you a feedback Okay, they know how to do all that. And then on your own end, as soon as the work ends, you will also be prompted to give a feedback about the clients that you have worked on. Because these are the feedback that other freelancers will also read up under the review section to know more about the clients that you have worked for. Okay, so here is a work history. Only the work that you have done on Upwork will show up here. All right except if there are other ways that i will see if there are other ways that you can bring up other works but i doubt if there are but i will see if we can do that when we get to the back end remember this is what visitors get to see on our profile so here portfolio portfolio simply means the work that you have done in the past either for work for clients on upwork or outside upwork so you want to take time if you have a portfolio of work Take time to upload them because it also helps in making your profile a lot complete and it encourages other clients to also go through your portfolio and want to work with you so based on this general skill of mine these are the skills that you're chosen okay these are the skills that you're chosen i think i need to edit this because this is a different sales and marketer uh, this is this is the way it is because initially what i had on my general profile was customer service but i had to change it to this so this became my general profile and these two right here became my um specialized profile okay i'll be showing us how to go about that much later so this skill i will have to change them now we head over to certifications look here this is where you have your certifications uploaded okay i'll show us as well how we can upload our certificates employment history remember when olainka was uploading our employment history so once you do this once you upload your certificates employment history if there are any other experiences that you have you could put them up but these are the things that make your profile 100 percent your employment history if there are any certificates if you have a portfolio okay if you have a video introduction basically those should give you a hundred percent profile okay um but it's a combination of more two or more that gives you that it mustn't be all of them at once all right so let's return back to the back end which is where we do most of the edits now at the back end here this is what you will be seeing because this is where you this is like your powerhouse this is where you control everything so if i want to change anything about my profile i can just click on this and then it gives me the opportunity to edit anything of course it asks me my password so um Just to be sure that you are the one trying to make an edit on your on your profile okay so you see this is everything that pertains to your profile 
this is profile settings all right beginning with the profile you want to ensure that your profile is visible now there's something i learned about this visibility if after i think if after your first few months you are not able to get a job or you are not active on upwork your profile will automatically change to private and it means nobody will be seeing your profile except yourself and the only way out is by increasing or subscribing to a paid version of um, upwork so you want to be sure that you are very active on upwork and let me quickly point this out you might get discouraged when you begin to apply for job five proposal is not enough when i got my first job i had applied for about 90 different jobs that is i sent about 90 proposals i am not exaggerating i can show it all to you before i got my first job so don't go sending five proposal and say nobody's responding to you therefore i will stop no there is no backing down here once you start you continue all right now um project preference i didn't really choose anything here uh long term short term you want this i can just go with this for short term and long term okay earnings privacy this is why i talked about your earning you can actually make that money that you have earned you can hide it if you want to but you can only do that when you upgrade to what freelancer plus membership okay and to do that just click on this and you'll be given the option to do that but i don't want to do that now all right so experience level for most of you make sure that you choose entry level except if you are very experienced in the skill that you have chosen then go ahead and choose intermediate or expert okay but for for newbies for those who are just coming on an upwork just use entry level that should serve categories these are the categories that you have chosen when you are filling out your forms i mean your sign up options your sign up forms you stumbled on most of this here so here I have customer service as a category based on the skill I choose. Admin support as a category, sales and marketing and writing. Right. So this is where we have the specialized profile. Remember, I showed us two specialized profile in addition to my my uh, general profile. So these are the specialized profile. I can always edit them if I want to. You see, view, edit, switch specialty, or even delete them if I feel I want to change my profile okay remember i told us that as a freelancer you can always diversify probably you started your freelancing job as a salesperson and then in the process you started acquiring more certificates more knowledge and then you got a certificate in data science for instance you can head over here and decide to delete any of this one so that you build a fresh profile specialized profile please when i say fresh profile i don't mean go and sign up from the start no it means your original profile <coughs> sorry excuse me your original profile edit it so that it bears the new profile you want it to have and there's a caveat every body on upwork is entitled to only one account if upwork finds that you have more than one account they will ban you and you don't want that to happen so you are entitled to one account but you under that one account you are entitled to three profiles three profiles but one account so take note of that so this is where you can link your account if you have any account with twitter with um, stack overflow debian art github or dribble again this is another avenue that can help you get your profile up to 100 percent if you link any of these accounts if you have them the profile is likely to shoot up to a hundred percent so other things here billings remember this is still this is like the settings this is the settings the powerhouse the engine house of your upwork account so this is where you get to set everything you want the way you want them this is the billings and payment if you if you want to upgrade or you want to enjoy any upwork paid services this is where you fit in your 
credit card details okay so that if Upwork needs to charge you they can always charge you based on what you are set up membership and connect this is where you get to buy now there's something called connect connect is like the currency that you use to apply to Upwork are we together again I repeat connect is like the currency you use to apply it to Upwork now if let's quickly see something here look at this job for instance this is a sales agent job telemarketing if I click on it it will tell me that I need six connects you see this required connect to submit a proposal six available connects I have 22 connects left so it's like using six naira out of my 22 naira to apply for this job that is what it means okay so when you join upwork newly and your profile is all set up you'll be entitled to about 50 connects to start with now if you are able to update your profile to 100 percent you'll be giving an additional 30 to 40 connects making 90 connects all right now for every job you apply to and you get a reply even if you don't get that job for the fact that you were able to catch the attention of the recruiter and you get a reply even if all you got from the recruiter is okay as soon as you get a reply from anybody whom you applied to for a job upwork rewards you with 10 connects so that is why i tell people that i train that when you are writing your your proposal write with the aim of getting the attention of the recruiter so that even if you don't get the job your connect will not be a waste okay so if you write a proposal it's either you are writing to get that job or you are writing to re receive back the connect you used to apply for that job so you imagine now that i write or i craft out a proposal for this job and i used six connect out of 22 okay and then this person replied me i would have my 10 connects back so it's like an additional four connects on top of this six okay so this is how you can actually get to increase your connect every now and then some job require two connects some require four connects some six connects okay so you want to take note of that um and then your connect can also get exhausted i need to mention that your connect can get exhausted that is why you want to be very diligent with the use of your connect don't just go and apply to jobs anyhow you want to be sure about the job that you are applying for now let me quickly run us through some things to look out for when you're applying for a job for instance when you open up a job like this there are some things you look out for look out for payment method can see this person here their payment method is verified that is one thing that you need to be looking out for when you are applying for a job your payment the payment method of the recruiter or the employee employer rather should be verified in most of the cases okay and when you look at their rating you can imagine 61 reviews meaning this person has employed about 61 people on upwork to work for him or her so this one gives you a sense that this person is not a new person on upwork and this person is a regular employer okay so these are the things you look out for another thing you look out for is here higher rates okay for for someone who employs regularly the higher rate should be above 50 percent okay in this case now you can even see this is 499 hires meaning he has hired about 499 people on upwork and out of them 120 is still working still active and this person has posted an additional three jobs of which this one i am showing us is one of the three open jobs you can see that so this person has spent over 164,505 hours on upwork so these are some of the informations that you want to be looking out for before you go and start applying to a job okay so some persons i'll show us that in a few minutes to come
And the other thing you want to look out for is whether you are qualified for a job so that you don't go apply or waste your connect. Some jobs are very specific. They want experts. In, in this case, look here. Let me begin from the beginning. What you'll be seeing, you see how long this job has been posted, 16 hours ago. The title of the job, telemarketing. Okay? Now, for every job you are applying, make sure your profile is related to it directly or indirectly. For instance, this is telemarketing. You cannot apply to this kind of job with customer service profile. If not, you will not even get any attention. But if you have a sales profile, for instance, like myself, I can apply to this job because sales and telemarketing go hand in hand. Or if you have a marketing profile, you can also do that. Okay? Worldwide means they are looking for somebody to work from any part of the world. But that is not all. Another thing you want to look out for is need to hire two freelancers. Now, this is the kind of job that I even encourage people to apply for because it gives you more chance of getting um, picked. There are some jobs that require 20 freelancers. These are the kind of jobs that once you see them, even if there are over 50 people that have applied, apply for the job if you qualify. You get a higher chance of being selected, provided you can deliver and you can craft a very catchy proposal. Okay? So, this person here needs two freelancers. What you get here is what is referred to as the job description. What the person is expecting from the freelancer that they want to hire. In this case, it says we are looking for additional staff who can support our new architecture project. We need two sales agents who can do the following task outbound calls, conduct basic property online research, schedule appointments, and create basic reports. This is quite simple, a simple job description. There are some job descriptions which I'll be showing us. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you. There are some job descriptions that are very lengthy. When I mean very lengthy, I mean they are very lengthy, they are very long. <coughs> and some persons are very lazy to read. But I, I very soon I, I hope to see something like that. But let's continue for now. <coughs> this job requires more than 30 hours per week. Okay, so you want to be sure if you are the kind of person that works 9 to 5. Of course, you know this kind of job is not for you. Except if you know how to manage yourself even while working your 9 to 5. But left to me, anybody can do any kind of work. That's what I believe. Anybody can do any kind of work or not work. Okay? It's just a matter of time management. Alright? So, here, this project is a long-term project. And these are the kind of projects that you want to look out for. So that as you work, you are sure of monthly pay. Okay? This kind of project is what we call a full-time job. There are some that require just immediate work. Those ones you see that their pay are usually fixed pay. But in this case, this is an hourly pay. Um, I'm here to see where it is. Um, hold on, let me see. This is this is an okay. You see it here. This is an hourly pay. Okay. They need an intermediate person. Okay. The time more than six months, thirty hours per week, and it was posted fifteen hours ago. So when you see the kind of job that you want, number of freelancers that is needed to, the skills that are required is what you find here. You will see a very short description of the job here. Okay? You see how many people have submitted a proposal for this job. This is what you see here. Less than five. So meaning that not too many people want this job. So if you feel qualified for this job, you can go ahead and put in your proposal. Okay? Plus here means that this person is using a paid version of Upwork and the payment here is verified. Rating here, 5 star, meaning this person has a good rating. Where the person is located, United States. If I scroll down a bit, you see, and how much has the person spent, the person actually hid it, you see. So this is one of the benefits you get when you are using a paid version. The person has hid how much he has spent on Upwork. But if you see 
right here, this person has not hidden it. So this person has spent over twenty thousand dollars hiring people on Upwork, and this person is not using a paid version of Upwork. You see that? That is why he was not able to hide his own like this man here. Okay, the same telemarketing job, less than five dollars. You see, so telemarketing job is almost everywhere on Upwork, just like the Discord job I asked some of us to take take a lesson on. Okay. Now look at this person here. This one is unverified. This person has not has not verified his payment. So two things are involved. It is either this person is very new to using Upwork. Okay, this person is new to using Upwork, or mind you, there are scammers on Upwork. That is why I don't usually encourage people to to um, apply to this kind of jobs. I don't usually encourage people to apply to them. But there is also a good side to this kind of thing. This kind of jobs, if it is a scam work, I'm not supposed to be saying this, but let me just say it anyway. If you want to do it, that's your own risk. If it is a scammer that posted this, because you see many Nigerians disguising as Americans, and when how do you how do you easily know them when they want to pay you five hundred dollars per hour? Know that this one is a scam for a job that is supposed to be six hours or even three dollars per hour okay so when you see that kind of that kind of job you should know that this person has come all right now what we usually do with those kind of people remember i told you that for every response you get from your um from, for every response you get from your employer or your prospective employer you get back 10 connects okay so these are the kind of people that we use to get back our connect. We know that we are not interested in the job. We will just apply to them so that they can reply us. And once they reply us, we get our 10 connect and we abandon them and go. So that is how we walk around these kind of people who think we are smart. Okay? But for your sake, I would recommend that you look out for only those ones that have a verified payment options. That is what I would recommend. Verified payment options. Alright? So let's go back to where we were. Now, when you open a job, you will see, okay, let me continue. You will see some very specific things. This is, a, we'll finish with this. The person needs an intermediate in this very job role. That is somebody who is skilled, whose skill set or skill level is on the intermediate level. Okay, meaning you are good in sales, not a professional, and you are not a newbie. You are not totally new. But you are just in between. You're good. You're good with telemarketing. You're good with cold calling. You're good with scheduling of tasks, outbound sales. So these are the necessary skills that is required for this job, and they need you to be an intermediate in this skill set. Okay. Another thing that you look out for is questions. Some persons would ask you to answer the particular question in addition to what you are to send to them as a proposal okay so you want to make sure that you take your time to answer this question very diligently because in most cases how you answer this question is actually what gives you the job to be very frank so make sure you answer this question the reason is this when you the questions you answer is what your prospective employer gets to see first when you send your proposal not your cover letter, not your CV. But this question that they have insisted that you should answer is what they would see on their end first before they even get to see your cover letter or your CV or whatever it is that you have to submit. Okay? So you want to be diligent with your answers. And on top of that, the employers on Upwork also know that some people don't read job description. They don't read job description. So they just look at the title of the job, they go to Google, copy a, a cover letter, they come here and paste it, and then they submit. But that, that, does, that, 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 that does not help people in a way. And that is why most employers will insist that you should answer some questions. So that with these questions, they will know whether you have attended to the job description or not. Okay? The next thing, preferred qualification some jobs or some recruiters will specify who they want to apply for the job 
and what are the things that are required. So you need to note whether or not you qualify for a job before you apply for it. However, there are some jobs that myself I have stubbornly applied to even though I didn't qualify for it and I got the response. Okay, so that is taking a risk on your own side. But for you guys who are just starting out, I would really encourage that you do that because it might amount to a waste of connect. So in this case, job success score at least 80%. I should have actually gotten this. Okay, because as you work on Upwork, and as your client rates you, Upwork automatically calculates your success rates, okay? And then they rate you based on how your client have rated you. So I should have actually gotten this, but I had a problem. When I was starting out, I had two accounts because I had created the Upwork account before I got to know about all these things I'm teaching you. So I created two accounts, two different accounts, and I got suspended. And it is, a, it is a policy on Upwork that if you get suspended, there are some benefits that you will not be entitled to, okay, until after a long period of time. So these are some of the things that I should have gotten, but I couldn't get them because I was suspended for a while. So this job success call, I should have gotten this. Rising talent, I should have gotten that. I'll show us some of the things that we need to study so that you don't be fall a victim. Of what I had suffered. There are some things that you have to study and study them well. And there is a test that you write on Upwork that is called readiness test. That readiness test, I want you all to read all the articles involved in that readiness test and take the test because that test proves that you have understood everything about Upwork policy so that you don't fall victims. Okay, so that you don't fall victim. All right, the last thing that this person needs is English level, conversational. At least it should be conversational. Some people will require that they need only native English speakers. Okay, so these are some of the things that you look out for. Activity on this job. Proposal tells you how many people have submitted proposal for this job, less than five. In some cases, you will see more than 20 or between 20 to 50. Some you will see 50 plus. So once a job is more than 20 i want to encourage you not to apply for that job as an entry level person or entry level freelancer because you might end up wasting your connect okay and before i forget this is like a secret that i have used and i have thought and it has worked for me and it has worked for those that i have thought and the secret is this the best time to apply for job on upwork is midnight between the hours of 12 to 5 or between the hours of 12 to 6 the reason is this most of the people that are looking for freelancers on upwork they are international clients and our time and their time are not the same in fact most of them while we are at night they are in their own daytime so when many people are busy sleeping please i didn't get that best time to what did you say? Please, I didn't get the best time to. I said the best time to apply for upwork jobs. My network had issues then. The best time to apply for upwork jobs is midnight, between the hours of twelve midnight, <coughs> twelve midnight to six a.m. in the morning. Okay, and the reason is very simple. Okay. The reason is because most of the employers on upwork are international clients. Okay, just very few that you'll be seeing in Nigeria. Very few, maybe one or two. Like since I started working on Upwork, I have only seen only one person from Nigeria seeking for um, a, a freelancer to work for for him. Okay, other people are from different countries: UK, Canada, America, and the rest of them. So most of these people, their time zone and our time zone are not the same, and in most cases, their daytime is our night time. So they are more active during their own daytime and they post their jobs during their own daytime. So you want to be sure that you are available during their own daytime, not your own daytime, because you're not the one giving yourself a job. So you want to be sure that when it is between the hours of 12 to 5, that is when you will be seeing these kind of numbers, less than 5, less than 5. But once you wake up in the morning, 
between the hours of 7 to 12 noon what you'll be seeing here is 50 plus over 50 proposals and that's because people who have woken up before you have applied before you but when you are online when those employers are just posting the jobs okay let me give you a typical example let's be let's let's see a typical example you can see we are we are in the night time let's find the work when you find the work you click on most recent click on most recent when you click on most recent you see this job this was posted six minutes ago you see this click on it in fact you can even see it from here less than five okay less than five and why is that this person is in the united states okay and he just posted it so they are in their morning session or even afternoon session as the case may be but we are at our night session so they are more active at this time and this is the time they begin to look for people to work with and so at this time from time like this you can begin to apply because it's almost late okay this is almost what time is it now it's almost um it's past 10. okay you can be seeing things like this too at this hour but most of the time the best time that i have worked with over the time over the my experience and of work is between the hours of 12 to 6. okay 12 to 6. now let's um let's return to what we were doing before okay like this job here you can see this one does not have any specification so anybody can apply for this job this person you can see here this person needs an entry level the job is for how many months one to three months less than 30 hours per week how much is this person willing to pay 45 dollars per hour how many connects do you need six connects okay job success rate 20 percent higher rate this one uh, i can i can manage this person okay i can manage this person but there is no assurance that this person will hire because his higher rate is very low quite low below below um below 50 and you can see that is why his review is like zero review nobody has written anything about him okay zero review he doesn't have a review so these are the kind of things that you look out for before you apply for a job so that you're sure that you are not wasting your connect even though this person's payment is verified and he has spent over six thousand dollars on upwork still his higher rate is low and it doesn't mean you cannot apply to this don't get me wrong i'm only saying that the chances of response but of course since there are less than five people go ahead and apply that is how it works Okay, but if you look at this person, this person has five star rating. If I click on it, you scroll down, you can see that you can see what he, he wants people from Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Venezuela. So this kind of thing, don't bother applying. <coughs> Except if you are stubborn like myself, because you got the kind of job I apply for. Okay, but make sure that you are you are ready to let go of that connect. But if you come down here, you see, you read ratings about the person. You see good things about this person. And yesterday I spoke about starting your cover letter with the name of the recruiter. This is where you find the name of the recruiter. How do you find it? You look at each, each feedback here. There are usually two feedbacks. One feedback is from the freelancer that has worked with this client. And the second feedback is from the client to the freelancer i hope you understand what i'm trying to say look at the first feedback is from the freelancer he says it has been a pleasure working with mike you see this on this test project hope i can be able to work with him again and then this person is mike himself recommending this freelancer the name of the freelancer is sheila m okay Give it, gave him a five star rating. So if I want to get this person's name again, I could just scroll down to be sure that his name is actually Mike. I look at the next feedback. I loved working with Michael. So this alone confirms that the name of this recruiter is Michael. 
Okay, so that when I want to start my proposal, I will start with the name Hello Michael. And it makes him, it gives him a sense of personality, you know, that I actually took time to fish out his name. Okay, even here, he emphasized his name. Okay, but not many, not many employers will do this. Not many people have this time. So you can see, imagine this one. See, see how lengthy his job description is. See how lengthy it is. Some impatient freelancers, instead of reading through to know what this person needs, they won't read through. They just come here and click on proposal, submit a proposal. And once they submit a proposal, it takes them to the page where they will write their proposal and submit it. I took us through this yesterday, but let me just quickly, you see, even here it tells you, you do not meet all the client's preferred qualifications. You may still submit a proposal, but the client will see that the proposal does not meet the, the following criteria. This is the location that the client wants the freelancers to come from, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Venezuela. So you see why I said this kind of job don't apply for them, except you just want to try your luck. Okay, sorry about that. I have a running nose. Sorry, so proposal settings you, um, you will not see this on your own end. I am seeing this because I have two different proposals, I mean, two different profiles one as a freelancer, one as an agency member. Because I told you guys, I have an agency on Upwork. Okay, well, for you guys, you won't be seeing this, all you'll be seeing is just this. Okay. Now, it says propose with a specialized profile. If you have more than one profile set up, remember I told you every account holder on Upwork is entitled to three profiles. However, those three profiles will be housed under just one account. So, if you have more than one account or one profile rather, you will see the options here. Once I click on it, it will give you options to choose which profile do you want to select to submit this proposal with. Okay, so you want to be sure this proposal, for instance, is a virtual assistant profile. You see it, virtual assistant profile. So if I want to submit a proposal for this job, I wouldn't use my general profile. Why? Because my general profile is for sales and marketing. Neither would I use digital marketing. Why? Because my digital marketing profile is for social media management, advertising, and the rest of them. I would rather use tech support. Because this tech support is the profile that I created for customer service, virtual assistant, and the rest of it. So you see it. So if I want to apply for this job, I'll just click on tech support. And then it automatically brings that out. And then it tells me that I am using 6 connect out of my 32 connect. Okay? Meaning I will have 16 connects remaining. <laughs> And then scrolling down, I can decide to read through this person's job description here. Okay? Let's even read through and see what it looks like. Hello, hello. The job is for general virtual assistant. Everybody, if you are a customer service in this class, if you are a customer service rep in this class, you can do the work of a virtual assistant. In fact, by the virtue of your participating in this training, you are qualified as a virtual assistant if you have done everything diligently because everything you will see things for yourself i am about to join my best friends traveling the world spending a month in each of the coolest countries and cities and i need a wonderful bilingual va you see it this person needs a spanish and an english speaking person to apply for this job spanish and english necessary even better if you also speak some Portuguese. So you see why this person needed somebody from Argentina, Colombia, and the rest of them. To help coordinate everything to make sure it goes smashingly. We will be visiting Ibiza, Budapest, Dubai, Medellin, Buenos Aires, and many more epic spots. About me, this is about the section. You might not be seeing this in most people's um, stuff, okay? My name is Mike and I grew up in the U.S. as a very poor immigrant kid, but with wonderful hardworking and awesome parents as examples. I now own a few businesses and I spend a lot of time traveling, learning Spanish, taking dance lessons, and experiencing amazing restaurants and amazing places in the world. 
some of my goals for the next few years are that I want to meet an amazing woman. All these are just blah blah blah. Okay, about working with me, I have a full Google Doc. We've treated these Google documents. So you see why I said if you have followed this class diligently, you should be able to do this kind of job. I have a full Google Doc on how to do everything and have an amazing assistant right now that it works perfectly for. But she just received an amazing promotion where she lives in Mexico and she's going to be focusing on that. She says she could call she said you could call her and ask her about working with me. The type of person I'm looking for. Someone who is organized, thoughtful, smart, likes taking good care of people and being polite and enjoys laughing and making life easy and wonderful for others. About the job, you'll be coordinating Airbnbs. This is like a hotel. Flight, this is like appointment scheduling. Finding cool restaurants, same thing, appointment scheduling or, or event planning per se. And adventure trips we can do nearby. Okay? You will be managing the messaging on my Instagram, Tinder and Bumble. To coordinate meeting amazing dates and experiences along the way this includes helping coordinate amazing restaurants and weekends in amazing countries and beaches other virtual assistant type support with my website and simple tasks like scheduling appointments making reservations and researching things and a quick note about the schedule there is none this person is laughing here and I love if you felt like this was a great job to allow you the flexibility to do work where, when and how you want to as long as the work is getting done. So meaning this person wants a virtual or a remote assistant. No set hours. This is even a good job because this person is not strict with the hours. Meaning you can work at any time provided you do the job. That's all he's interested in. No set hours, although I would like you to be able to work and text during central standard time hours. This is another thing you need to take note of. Most people will insist that you, you should be able to, you should be available during their time. Now, whenever you see this kind of timing, this time zone, whenever you see things like this, always go on Google. This is how I do mine to make it easier for me. Go on Google. And types because some persons will ask you to schedule an appointment with them at this kind of time. Okay, some will give you their time and ask you, Is it okay? So, let's say for instance, Central Time Zone, go on Google and type it Central Time Zone, and that will give you the time equivalent in Nigeria. So, you can see Central Time Zone, this is 1532. Meaning that as we are presently, our time is, um, our time right now is uh, 10.32. But in the central time zone, they are in 15.32, which is 3 minutes in the afternoon. That's 2 minutes past 3, rather. Okay? So that is how it works for them. So we'll go back to where we were. Um, so about my interview process this person is this person is quite detailed not many people will be as detailed as this first of all thank you for reading all the way to this part 99 percent of people are not nearly as thorough as you are you see the person is even stating it clearly so i can already tell you are going to love meeting each other if you do me a favor when you send me a message simply add yup i read this part too this is what i was looking for you see this this thing will make many people fail this interview and if i go down if i go back to this work i can tell by the number of people he's interviewing that not many people passed this stage why because a lot of people are not patient enough to read because what many employers do they will tell you that add so 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 and so thing to your letter some will even be more specific to tell you where in your letter that word should appear. Some will say, begin your proposal with amazing grace. Something like that, just an example. Okay? And they will hide that information somewhere in between their write-up. 
so that if you did not read word for word, you will lose it. So this person is saying, if you will do me a favor, when you send the message, simply add yup. I read the last part too. Meaning, if I want to start this letter now, if I want to start this cover letter, I have to start this cover letter with this statement or this word. Where is it again? This word here, right here. So what I just do, I just copy this word. I read this part too. Copy it. Go to my cover letter and begin my cover letter with that word. Before I now say hello, if I say hello, Mike. So you see, this alone will catch the attention of Mike. And even if Mike does not give me the job eventually, and he gets to reply this, I have gotten my 10 connect back. So this is how you need to be very diligent with reading job descriptions so that you don't end up just wasting your connect just because of some silly mistake personally i have i have faulted i have been faulted in a case like this and i qualified for the job but you know what the woman said she cannot accept me just because i failed to add a simple word admin at the top of my letter which was which was insisted in the job description she insisted that anybody who is sending the letter to her, a cover letter or a proposal to her, should begin their proposal with the word admin. I didn't see it because I was rushing. I read the cover letter, but I skipped that part. And because of that, I lost that job. And it was a $10 per hour job. So you see, these subtle things can cost you a lot. It will cost you both your connect and it will cost you jobs on Upwork. Something that you are sure you are overconfident and you're certain that you can deliver on. But silly mistakes like this will make you lose that opportunity. And you know the white guys, their yes is their yes and their no is their no. And they are very attention to detail. They, 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 they love attention to details a lot. So once they see that you miss that simple instruction that they have given you, you have missed out entirely. So thank God I saw this kind of thing. At least it saves me the time and energy. Is somebody I must have missed out on my network. Yes, this is the color day talking. I must have missed out on my network was bad. I didn't get the full importance of the connect. Oh my word. Does anybody have the same problem? Did anybody else experience I that? I didn't hear her clearly. Huh? I didn't hear her clearly. I didn't hear her clearly. She said I she didn't get what I was saying about Connect and the rest of them. Is there anybody that experienced the same? I heard that. And I just don't understand the role the Connect plays. Like, that's the part I don't understand. Every other thing you've been explaining about of mine, I got back to just the importance of the Connect. Con connect. I hear you mentioning Connect. I said, so that's I, what I just I said explain. Connect is like a currency on Upwork. It is what you use to apply for jobs, okay? For every job you apply on Upwork, you use a connect to buy that job. It's like you're buying a job, okay? It's like you're buying a job. So the connect is the currency you use in applying for that job. So as you apply for the job, your connect, your connect decreases. And when your connect is exhausted, you buy. You buy with money. Is that understood? Okay. All right. Yes, All right, so let's go back to this. So here we are. We are back to this. So we read through everything. What I was just trying to show or explain to us here is that you should be diligent in reading job descriptions back to back, word for word, so that you save yourself the trauma of wasting your connect. And as well, you give yourself more edge over other freelancers who will just copy and paste okay so make sure that you do what your employer or your prospective employer wants you to do so in this case it says start with your i read the last part too and he said you should do this so that he knows and then 
we can start we can set up a time to meet so you see that it means if you don't do this no time to meet between you and me that's what it means the next step is i will invite you to a fully paid test project i will invite you to a fully paid test project job on upwork where you will plan out a mini vacation for me and a friend so i can see your planning process you see at the end all you have to do is send me back a quick loom video explaining the trip and how you researched and what recommendations you were excited about and then we will set up a video call for us to connect and get started as soon as possible so you see how it works on upwork okay so in this case the person says he's willing to pay three dollars to five dollars per hour of the work you'll be doing for him but in my case you can see my rate is fifteen dollars so i cannot go and start fixing fifteen dollars here because it goes beyond what the person is budgeting so all i will do is i'll simply decrease mine to say five dollars to make it fit the range that the person has chosen you see how it works and then but if my initial rate if my profile rate is five dollars and the person is bidding ten dollars to twenty dollars i can increase mine to twenty dollars or fifteen dollars or seventeen dollars so that is how it works that is the two ways that this works so you can either increase upward or decrease upward or downwards rather based on the budget of the client okay and mind you for everything you fix upwork is entitled to 20 percent i already told us this and then what you get at the end of the day is this so if you are calculating your own money this is what you should be calculating not this but if you are setting your rate always set your rate so that it does not affect what you get at the end of the day that is how i work okay so the cover letter is what we already dealt with yesterday so i wouldn't be going through all that i know i have not uploaded the video for yesterday i will do that probably alongside this video that we have for today and then lastly is upload this is where you upload your cv your certificate that you have acquired mind you upload certificate that is related related to this job description for instance this job requires you to to be able to um, set appointment for instance so if you have taken a, a course on appointment settings and you have a certificate on it you can upload it here it gives you an edge it makes the person understand that you are not just telling him what you do what you know you are also telling him based on the based on the fact that you have studied about it and you are certified okay the person is also looking for a virtual assistant he's looking for somebody who knows google suite okay customer service if you have a customer service certificate upload it right here okay so you are entitled to upload as many as 10 files okay so i don't see some persons just leave this place blank and i don't know why they do that meanwhile you can actually use it up and get yourself more opportunity to to catch the client's attention so please take my advice don't leave this place blank always fill it up for me i use up all the 10 chances all the 10 slots i use it up okay except if it's something i don't have enough certificate for i will just use my cv and my cover letter all right so um i think that is that for at the end of course we click on submit once you submit the proposal your client receives it and you wait for a reply okay so another thing i want to quickly mention to us is sometimes if there were questions to be answered you will see them under cover letter like the previous job i was showing us the person needed us to answer some questions so you will see those questions under your cover letter it will have a box like this where you will type in your answers okay so be diligent to answer those questions talking about loom loom even though it's not part of what i wanted to teach in this class but since this client has mentioned it there are two two tools that you will be using most times to attend to a client's request when it comes to upwork interviews some will require you to upload a video of yourself 
and attach it to your proposal. Some will, some will insist that you upload an audio, an audio record of your voice and attach it to your proposal. So at the, uh, um, hopefully by tomorrow, just remind me by tomorrow, I will show us some tools that we can use to do that. So that when we begin to apply for jobs and any of our clients request for those, we can use those tools very easily to get that sorted out. Um, having said all that, let's proceed. Where we were, we have visited how to find work. Okay? We have visited how to find work. And you can, you can as well as you can see here, you can save this work. You can save the job here. If you are busy with something else, you can save the job and come back to it later. Alright? So, I've shown us basically how to work around getting your jobs or searching for job. Other things you can do is you can come over here and search for any job that you want. Okay, any job of your choice based on the skill that you think you can deliver on. Just come over here and click on any job at all. Say for instance, Discord. Okay. Click on that and then you will get an interface like this. Can see it senior discord manager okay senior community manager discord you can see how much they are willing to pay that's why i told us to ensure that we learn this discord of a thing their pay is usually big okay discord promotion do they pay discord chat creators what this person will be doing is just to be chatting with their phone and this is why i told you that even as you can see here they need about eight freelancers you see 15 to 20 people have submitted the proposal for this. So, even if you don't have a laptop, you can, these are the kind of jobs that you can do with your phone. And by the time you earn this amount, in a month, you should have gotten your own laptop. Okay? We need help growing our Discord members. And here, okay, so you see, there's all these jobs are jobs that you can do with your phones. With your phones. Alright? So, there is no complain about i don't have a laptop or this or that go and search for discord jobs discord jobs learn them and apply for the jobs so that is that for search and you can also filter your searches okay this is a filter or a filter column here i can filter according to anything i want if i want only jobs that are meant for entry level persons i click on entry level and it will filter the job so that it takes out jobs that are meant for experts and intermediate and shows me only jobs that are meant for entry level persons okay entry level freelancers more so if i want to only see hourly jobs i click on hourly job remind you it will now show me jobs for entry level recruiters i mean job for entry level freelancers and hourly job payments So that is what we get here but if i want to see just hourly job not only entry level i'll untick this and that works so you can use this at your own discretion and then you should also pay attention to fixed jobs or fixed price jobs okay in fact most times many people get to get their first job through fixed price jobs these are jobs that are short term like job you can do within one hour three hours five hours you know like this job here discord and twitter marketing it requires how many uh we said one hour ago uh, this is not verified I don't, I don't need this okay the other thing that this is verified okay this is a fixed price job it is for hundred dollars so these are the kind of job that you do sharp sharp and just get your money immediately there is no need waiting for long end of the month okay but all these hourly jobs all these hourly jobs they pay you on weekly basis on weekly basis every week okay in fact generally upwork pays you weekly basis but you don't get to withdraw your money until after about two weeks of processing the money all right that is when you will now be able to see the money reflect in your upwork account i hope you are together so um other things here are other ways to filter jobs 
if you want to see only jobs that less than five people have applied to you click on this and it will bring them all out only jobs that very few persons have applied to you will see them you see everything here less than five less than five less than five and the rest of them so at your own free time when you create your own upwork account you could play around this the next thing i want to quickly show us is how we already talked about saved jobs proposals we already talked about proposals we talked about profile we left somewhere which is here yeah we are at this back end so we are back to this in case your connect finishes <coughs> Once your connect finish, once your connect finishes, you will see zero connect available here. So the only option for you is to buy connect, and you can only buy connect with your credit card, okay, your Mastercard. So you either buy connect or if you already have money on your Upwork account, like myself, you can simply just buy directly with your Upwork account. So you click on buy connect, and then it takes you to the connect page where you can buy your connect so 10 connect is for one dollar five cents you see that and it says your account will be charged this amount okay your new connect balance will be this and so on and so forth all right so that is that for buying of connect so we go back and um, we move to the next and then the other thing i need to tell you is every month okay every month we are, we are you are entitled to 10 connect per month 10 connect per month so if you join this month which is january by the by the end of one month you will be given 10 connect so even if your connect is remaining zero by the end of your one month you will be entitled to 10 connect so your zero changes to 10 if you don't want to buy connect so you have to be waiting every month to get your connect but of course, as I told us, as soon as you register for the first time, you have 50 connect. If you do the Upwork readiness test and you pass, you have extra 40, I mean 30 connect or thereabouts. Yeah, Upwork readiness test also helps your profile to get 100%. But either you do the Upwork readiness test and you get your profile to 100%, or you use the other method I showed you to get your profile to 100%, you'll be entitled to. 30 to 40 connect so meaning you can actually start up with your upwork account with 100 i mean with 90 connect okay how do you take your upwork readiness test some of you are asking this is where you go to find work and you come down here you see it upwork readiness test and you can actually take that test multiple times even if you fail it you can take it again and again and again the highest rating is five five over five okay I will be, we'll be coming to that much later. Let's quickly go, jump through this. We move to contact info. Under contact info, they are asking me to put in my password again. This is just a pro procedure. So contact info, they bring this will bring out everything about my contact. Okay, this will bring out everything about my contact. Please permit me to use this opportunity to change the name. That is what it is. I don't know why it's reflecting the way it's reflecting, but not to worry. So this is this is what you get to see based on what you have filled. Your username, your name, your um, email address, and every other thing that you have filled in your contact details. Okay, this is if you want to, you can still use that same account that you have to post a job. Okay, you can post a job with that same account, but if you want to do that, you need to create another account inside that account. And then the account will become a client account because the account I'm using presently is a freelancer's account. I'm using it to source for jobs. But if I want to post a job for people to apply, I'll use a client account. So this is where you can create your client account. This is also where you can create your freelancer account. But because I already have a freelancer account, it's not showing up here. But for some of you, if you go through this page, 
you will see a freelancer account here for you. This is where you can change your time zone. Okay. For us, we share the same time zone with these people. So that is why it is the way it is. And then your address, your phone number, and that's it for your contact. Tax information. For every new person, after you have gotten your first payment, your first offer, okay, you will be required to put in your tax information. Now, the good thing about this is that because you are not a U.S. citizen, because if you are a U.S. citizen, you will be asked to fill in. There, there is a form, which is this. There is a form that you will be asked to fill as a U.S. citizen. But for us, who are not U.S. residents, we are asked to fill our own type of form, okay, for non-U.S. residents. So it doesn't mean you will be, be paying any tax anyway, because they assume that you are already paying tax in your country. Except if this will change eventually later in the future, I don't know. But for the records, for now, I don't pay tax. Okay, because they are assuming that I am already paying tax in my country. So, however, you'll be asked, you will see it popping up somewhere around there on your own profile. As soon as you sign up and you probably have your first job, they will tell you to put in your tax information and the rest of them. Just follow the prompt. It's not difficult. And then we've seen my profile. We've seen profile settings, but let's just see it again so that we're sure that we touched everything. But this is what you get to see on your profile. This is your general profile. This is your specialized profile. Okay? You can edit how much you want to be earning on this place. You can see I can change it to 12 or anything that pleases me and I save that. So for now, what I will be earning is twelve dollars but what my clients will be seeing me to be to charge them is fifteen dollars so you understand this already if i want to change the name that is appearing here maybe to customer service or something i can just edit that from here okay and then i change this to customer service i want that but i want to leave it the way it is if i want to copy the link to my profile the link to my profile Two ways I can do that is I come here and copy this link here, or I go here and just simply copy it from here. Either ways, my link is copied. If I want to edit my uh, my executive summary or profile summary, I can always do that from here. All right. I already told us that the work history is automatic. It's not something that you can upload, or it's something that reflects based on the work you do on upwork however you can always set it up the way you want it either the newest job that you have attended to should come up first or whatever you want to set it your own discretion use your discretion uh however another thing i want to show us is how to make sure that your job history appear on your profile okay to make sure your job history appear on your profile once you click on the job on the profile because I've, I've already set that up on the profile on each of the profile for instance let me use uh, okay you see here i have just two jobs available here okay but if you check this other one <coughs> i have three jobs showing up here two completed one in progress if you check this other one as well i have two jobs okay so if i want if i check this one digital marketing i have three jobs two computer one in progress so if i want for instance this other job to appear here i just simply edit it okay and then it brings out my work history okay and then anyone i tick is what we show on that particular profile so in this case i take these two but i do not take this one that is why it's not showing up on this profile so if i want it to show up i'll take it and save it and then automatically it comes up on this profile okay but because that job that i'm doing presently is not related to customer service it is basically social media work so i had to just skip it for this profile and just leave it for this profile and a general profile okay it's also a sales job kind of because i'm helping the clients to also source for new clients to 
purchase their service. Okay, so it's also a sales job and a social media job. So it qualifies as a sales job and it qualifies as a social media job. That is why I had to tick them. All right. So that is that for job history or work history. Uh, portfolio, very easy. The same thing. Once you upload your portfolio, click on this, and then the portfolios you have will pop up. Always tick on portfolios accordingly. Once you can create a new portfolio by clicking on that plus sign, or you can use a template available. Just play around it to see how it works. All right. Um, the next thing you want to look at. The next thing you want to look at is, uh, of course, if you already have portfolios, just the way I was showing us how our job history should turn up on our profile. If you already have a portfolio, you can just click on edit, and whichever one you want to turn up on your profile, just click on it, and it will show up. Skills and expertise. You can always edit this and put in as many skills as you want. So you can see industry experience, select any skill that you want. You can see more if you want to choose more, or you can search for other skills if you want that. Just make sure that you select the skills that you know that you you can offer. Okay, these are industries that you can work. These are ticketing and CRM tools that you think you can work with. Okay product support services all right so while you're doing this make sure that you select only the ones that are applicable to you don't select anything more all right so that is that for skills and expertise and your project catalog you can actually upload your project if you have any project that you want your clients to see on your profile you can upload them here testimonials uh, i can request endorsement from past clients okay so do that simply just request a testimonial put in their details here okay put in their details here and then click on request a testimonial and then your clients can actually give you a recommendation based on what you have done for them so at your own discretion you can play around this and then certifications this is where you get to upload your certificates that you have gotten over time both from linkedin hubspot coursera and the rest of them how do you do that click on add certificates <coughs> and then at this option you click on select your certification these are the recognized certificates on, on Upwork as at this moment. So you can go and search for the ones that you already have. Okay? Search for the ones you already have. All those LinkedIn certificates are not listed here. Okay? So if there are any certificates that you think are not listed here and you have them, you can just scroll down to custom certificates. You can see this custom certificate and then click on add a custom certificate you will be given a form to fill okay that was how i added this one all right once you click on custom certificates you'll be given a form to fill i don't know why it's not coming up okay it's, i think it's loading Hold on, see, are, are, we, are we still together am i speaking to myself Hello, are we together? Hello? 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 This is serious. So, to add a certification, click on this positive sign. I don't know, it's not loading. Let me refresh this page. Let's 
So scroll down to certifications. To add a certification, click on the positive sign here. And that should bring this out. Click on select your certification. To add any certification that you have that is not listed here, scroll down and then click on add a custom certificate. And then you have this to fill. Okay. So you fill out all these forms. Once you fill out all these forms, you click on add certification and automatically your certificate will be added just like this one right here. Okay. So the same thing applies to your employment history. Ordinarily, if you signed up with your CV or your LinkedIn profile, all this should have been taken care of. Your employment history should have been taken care of. But if it is not, if you signed up manually, then to add your employment history, just click on the positive sign here and then you fill up your employment history and click on save automatically the employment history will be added up for you the same thing with the other experiences so that is that for the profile okay that is that for the profile so let's quickly return to finish up this part We were, we were under um, settings before now. We we're under profile settings. Sorry. So let's quickly round up with the settings. So we're under profile settings. Now we're looking at get paid. This is where you get to set up your account so that you can get paid all right this is quite a delicate part now what you'll be seeing here is your available balance like i told you it usually takes up about two weeks your client pays you weekly but your payment does not reflect until after about two weeks so here you get to see the balance that you can withdraw to your local account okay however there is there's an issue here because upwork does not recognize most of the nigerian local accounts you would need a third party application to withdraw this money okay so you withdraw your money from your upwork account to your third party application which is payoneer account or paypal account and then when you have withdrawn it to your payoneer account for instance then from your payoneer account you can withdraw it to your local account either to your naira account or to your dollar account if you have a domiciliary account all right but you also need to set up your payment details you need to set up your payment details and to do that you come down to payment details and go down to payment method okay but before you do this, you want to make sure that you already have either a Payoneer account or a PayPal account. Okay. So if you have any of those, in my case, I have a PayPal account. So you add method, click on add method, and you have options here. Okay. You can actually, this is recommended for Nigeria, you see that. So you can add up directly to your Nigerian account. I think this was a, this is a new development quite impressive you can withdraw directly to your local bank account or if you have uh, a, dumb, a dumb account if you have a dumb account you can withdraw directly to your dumb account so this is the charge that would be uh, withdrawn if you are withdrawing directly to your dumb account you will charge 0.99 us dollars per withdrawal okay or if you're depositing to your local bank account you can deposit your local bank account in naira all right so or if you don't want that you can simply use a payoneer account or you can use a wire transfer or you could use it direct to us bank of course this is for us citizens so for us you can either use a payoneer account a paypal account or directly withdraw to your account so you can set this up 
if you want to i haven't tried this before but let's see what it brings up for us you're asking for a password put that in and we head over to this point okay so asking for a swift code unfortunately i do not have a swift code this font send directly to your bank so to get a swift code you might need to check in with your bank your local bank okay to get your swift code and then you can put that in here else the only option or the only alternative is to use either a paypal account or a pioneer account and to do that just simply click on setup and you would be led through the process but because we don't have a pioneer account yet um i would not want to go through this process but you click on setup and once you click on setup it will take you through the necessary form that you would need to fill to put in your payoneer details so you can see that they're asking if you have an account already click on here or if you don't have an account you can begin to set up your account so go through the process and your account will be linked to upwork so that whenever you want to withdraw you can withdraw from your upwork account to your pioneer account and then from your pioneer account directly to your bank account whenever you sign up your pioneer account you will be asked to provide your local bank account so it makes the withdrawal process quite easy it's a little dicey with um, paypal so i wouldn't want to touch that for now um, in few classes to come i'll be teaching us how to how to work or how to open a pioneer account and hopefully a paypal account all right so that is that for that and then we move to teams my teams i think this is basically for this is basically for um if you have an agency for instance or if you have uh uh, client that you're working for presently this is where you get to see them all okay this is where you get to see them all connected services connected services if you have any external third party accounts connected to your upwork in my case i could connect my google account with upwork but i don't do that so password and security this is where you get to change your upwork password so that people don't get access to your upwork and eventually withdraw your money you can as well set up a two-step verification if you want to do that identity verification this is where you can manually verify your identity okay manually verify your identity i think this option is only available upon getting your first job but i've not tried it out before getting my first job so i don't think it's available you could try that out at your own discretion and lastly notification settings okay notification settings uh this is where you get to set up whatever it is that you want to receive as a notification from upwork when i want to get a desktop notification or a mobile notification you can always set that up or an email notification you can always set that up up via these settings right here so uh with this we have covered quite a lot quite a lot of this upwork section um so we'll move to the next which is my stats my start we we'll click on that and see how that loads up so um here we are under my stats this is where you get to see your job success score and your badges on upwork if there are any provided for you along with your monthly earnings your 12 month earnings and uh, other information these are just basically the statistics of your profile on upwork this is where you get to see all that now upwork readiness test is a test that like i said i encourage everybody to take this test because this test basically takes you through the whole upwork policy to ensure that you understood them well and you do not violate them 
so that you do not fall prey or victim to any scam process. To begin that, just simply click on start test and you'll be guided through everything that you need to prepare and pass for this test. Now, like I made mention of this earlier on, I said you could take this test as many times as possible. You could see the first time I failed the test, the second time I passed, and I kept trying until I got the ultimate, which is five marks. So, um, lastly we have uh my project dashboard this is a new development um here is where like fiverr this is where you get to set up a project that you want clients to buy okay so you can set up a project it could be a work of yours that you have done and you want clients to buy them it could even be a service that you're willing to offer all right so here it says sell fixed price contract that like clients can buy right on project catalog so uh at your free time you could play around this so let's go through my jobs very quickly under my jobs the first thing we have there is my jobs and here is where we find the jobs that we are currently working on okay so you can see active contract this is what we'll find here if you want to view all you go ahead and do that also under my jobs you'll find earnings available now all right and thereafter you can always play around these to see what you could get out of it here we have view diary send a message to this client of course and propose new contract okay propose new contract other things you can do i can click on this to see to so open up the contract okay i can click on this to open up the contract and i would have a broader view a broader view of this contract so here is a to-do list is there anything i am doing presently on this contract the time and earnings everything i have worked and everything i have earned the duration of time i've worked and the money i've earned so far will show up here messages and files things that I have sent to the clients and things that the clients have sent to me via Upwork will show up right here, all right? Work diary. Whenever we are working, whenever we are working, these are like messages, okay? Whenever we are working, Upwork takes screenshots of our work, all right? Upwork takes screenshots of our work and that screenshot is shown to our clients, all right? So all those screenshots can be found under work diary, okay, under work diary. Everything that you get to do for your client, as soon as you work with them, will turn up under work diary. And Upwork has a way of making sure that each work diary is tagged, time tagged. And when you click on each of them, you would see the activity as you have worked okay from this time through this time this is the work you have done the activity level how active were you during those time or were you just kidding or playing on your keyboard doing nothing and hoping to get paid you know everything how many times you typed your keyboard how many times your mouse moved all these are recorded on upwork diary right and it is done with an app called upwork time tracker and that would be downloaded on prompt as soon as you get a first job upwork will prompt you to download your time tracker i'll be showing us that as the last thing for this tutorial the next thing you can see is terms and settings okay terms and settings you can always edit the terms here but it should be in accordance to what your uh, client has agreed with you so this is uh, the weekly limit this all these are set up by the client so you don't really have anything particular to do here and of course you can always view your offer you can view original proposal you can view view original job posting all these you can always get them right here and then feedbacks if there are any feedback that you have gotten 
or if there are any feedback that you want to get from your clients you can always request a feedback if you want that and the client would be buzzed or will be notified but mostly you can only get a feedback just as you can see here you can only get a feedback when your contract has ended so this contract is not yet eligible for feedback because it is still in progress and the last thing that you can do here is to end your contract okay you can propose a new contract you can give a refund if the client is asking for a refund of course you can also call create a dispute you can ask up for a dispute between you and your client if you have a problem with the client you can request public feedback okay and then you can end your contract right here if you want to all right so with this we are done with everything under my jobs we've seen all contracts we've seen work that we've seen my job so we're going to report all these you can actually play with them at your own time overview of the report gives you an overview of everything that you have done on upwork your earnings and the rest of them all right my report this is just basically the analytics of everything that you have achieved and everything that you have worked through on upwork billions and earnings talks about what you have earned and what you have been paid or what you're entitled to an upwork connect history talks about how you have bought connect when you bought connect and all that transaction history the same thing how you withdrew your money how your money came into the upwork account and all that certificate of earnings for every earning that you that you get upwork gives you a certificate which you could use to uh, defend your payment at any time of your choice and here is the point where we get to see the messages interaction between us and the client between you and your client okay all the interactions are seen under messages all right so while that is loading up we could quickly go through this other part okay it's up so on the right hand column here you would see different clients that have that have responded to you okay so if there is any one of them that you want to talk to just simply click on them and their messages will pop up right here so that you can talk to them and at the top here you can view the contract which which brought about this message all right the contract you applied to or the contract that you are running presently okay you can only view contract if you have been given an offer else what you'll be seeing there is just to schedule a meeting or record with Lou so you can actually make a video record for your client via Upwork using Lou all right another thing you could do is that you could from here you could have all this set up to please you whenever you're typing you can either use your enter key to add a line or to automatically send a message so this is basically how you interact with your clients you can also put a call across to them if they want that to happen or they could as well put a call across to you and you could play around other things right on this platform and so with that we've come to the end of our upwork um, navigation we've basically gone through everything that we require to um, understand the workings of upwork the last thing i want to show us the last thing i want to show us is how to use our time tracker all right how to use a time tracker so i'll quickly bring up my time tracker on upwork to download a time tracker you would see a prompt asking you to download a time tracker on upwork when you get your first job all right or you could do that manually by searching for time tracker upwork time tracker on google and then simply click on download so i'll be opening up my time tracker so that i show us exactly how to use our time tracker it's loading just give me some few minutes 
Why the time tracker is so loady? Why the tra time tracker is so loady? Let's let's see if we are still in tune with each other. Let's see if you're still in tune with each other. All right, so um, our time tracker is on. It's popping up. And this is what it looks like. Sorry, it went off. So sorry, it's taking up time. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Ordinarily, for the first time, when you bring up your time tracker, it will be placed side by side, something like this. This is what you see on your time tracker. All right. At the right hand side is the time tracker itself and on the left hand i mean on the left hand side is the time tracker itself on the right hand side according to the screen facing me is where you have your messages so this is another place where you can actually communicate with your client aside using the web browser version all right so i can always minimize this or even cancel it out entirely if i don't want to use it and then I left with just I'm left with just my time tracker. Now to use a time tracker, three things I'm showing us. First, always set a memo. A memo is like the task that you want to accomplish for every given time that you are working. In this case, I want to accomplish this task given to me by my client. My client has asked me to work on his Google My Business account. So I named this task Google My Business. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to know is that whenever you are working, I told you already that Upwork will take screenshots of your job. These screenshots will be shown right here. The screenshot will be shown right here. And that is what you get to see under your work diary. Okay. All these screenshots that I've been taking so far will be shown under your work diary. And as you take a screenshot, just at the edge of your screen here, you will hear the click of a camera sound. Okay? The click of the camera sound, and then you see a timer popping up right upwards. Now, if you get that prompt and the screenshot that you find that was taken by Upwork is not something you want your clients to see you will see an option to delete that screenshot right under that timer so you see that you click on delete screenshot and then you'll be prompted to confirm that you want to delete or you can head over to your work diary and then simply click on the screenshot option and then remove so these are the two ways you could delete your screenshot remind you Whatever screenshot you delete, your client would likely be able to track it because of the description, the, the frequency, or discrepancy rather, in the time difference of your screenshots. And lastly, once you have set up your memo, you can simply toggle this on and your time begins to read. Okay? And so with this, I have finally come to the end of everything upwork so at this juncture i will be asking us all to go ahead and sign up on upwork and get ourselves started with applying for jobs thank you very much for attending my talk show and uh, if there are no questions at this time 
out. I don't. Uh, is there any question? I don't have question. All uh, right. So um, we'll call it a night, and um, I'll try to upload the replay of this um, video session and this interest session so that we can always watch it all over again. At this juncture, I'll say good night and thanks for coming. Good night.